Hello everybody, in today's video uh, it's about this uh, BMW E46 compact and we're gonna change its oil, its engine oil, uh, its uh, oil filter and then the air filter here and in order to do this uh, we're gonna grab this little things here and uh, open this and then remove this plastic from here and then uh, unscrew these two bolts here to remove the, the plastic from here hiding the oil filter because using these two we're gonna open the oil filter and um, change it and then tighten it up back with it and uh, another bolt is the draining bolt underneath the car uh, I'm gonna show that uh, in a minute so then we're gonna move to the back of the car and we're gonna change the brake discs from the rear wheels because they're pretty worn and uh, the brake pads as well this one's a little bit broken To change the air filter, first we're gonna remove these two bolts holding the air box, and then uh, coming behind here, we're gonna unscrew uh, that flathead screwdriver back here holding the duct, the air duct, and then also we're gonna unclip this uh, airflow sensor. Okay. You also have to unclip the the little air box from below the the big air box. This one. Okay. Now we can go ahead with the airflow sensor. We need to push these two ears, one from here and one from the other side, and in the same time pull it out. Okay, perfect. Now we can go ahead and open these two 8mm nuts, one here and one here, holding the airflow sensor. And then we can go ahead and open all these little screws here, Philip head screws. And then underneath here is going to be the FX. They're actually also 10mm. Screwdrivers. All Philip head screwdrivers are opened. Oh, almost. Here's the dirty air filter. <laughs> By pulling it up, it will come out. If you don't uh, uninstall the um, the airflow sensor, then it will be inserted here, so we won't be able to pull out the air filter. That's why you need to uninstall the airflow sensor. Now we can take the new filter, install it back, and uh, put back the whole hair box on the car. New air filter is back. Now we can go ahead and put back the airbox cap uh, and screw back all the Philip head screwdrivers okay don't worry about the dimension of them because they're all the same dimension so you won't miss them back the nuts holding the airflow sensor don't overkill them they're tight on plastic okay. now we can put back the airbox okay put back the airbox uh, put this little thing down here in the other airbox from below and then uh, insert the dock on the airflow sensor Make sure this fits well. This rubber here on the airflow sensor. 
and then put back the the cable of the sensor. I'm just put a little bit of grease on the duct and on the on the airflow sensor. This way the duct went inside pretty easy. Now I just tighten up this uh, flat head screwdriver holding the duct on the airflow. Then I'm gonna put back the sensor and that's about the air filter. Clean the area a little bit with some brake disc cleaner. draining the oil by uh, opening the bolt underneath the car open the the oil where do you put the oil in the engine and also open the oil check lever and let it besides also open the air filter the oil filter a little bit in order to drain the oil easier and to get all the oil out from the engine or most of it Drain bolt is down there. We need a 17 millimeter and uh, something to drain the oil in. I'm just gonna use this five liter um, plastic bottle. So open the drain, the drain plug, and then just drain the oil. Uh, oil filter is out. The old one it's here. Uh, now using a small, a little flathead screwdriver take out the three o-rings from the oil filter assembly and throw them away put the new ones here and then put back the oil filter okay before putting the oil filter assembly back uh, make sure you clean real well the whole thing here don't let any old oil there yep now we can put back the oil assembly, the filter oil filter assembly, tighten it with your hand and then tighten it with this tool. Don't tighten it too much. Uh, for the oil filters generally it's 10 newton meters, which is really really easy tight. Alright, so oil is drained. Uh, we have a new washer for the oil plug. Uh, the Neurometer wrench is set on 30 newton meters, so 30 and uh, we're about to put back the uh, oil drain bolt and then fill up the engine with uh, amount required. Now that we've put 4 liters of fresh engine oil in the oil, we've uh, closed this cap, we started the engine, uh, we let it run for like 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Then we stop it and uh, check the oil level again here. I checked it before, it was a little bit above um, between minimum and maximum, but that's okay because the oil filter is gonna probably suck 200, 300 milliliters of oil. Meanwhile, we can put back uh, this cover, this plastic cover, and uh, as well this one. Okay. Okay, come on, please. This one is broken, but it still holds there. This one is okay, back. We're done with the engine side. We can move to the brake disc on the back of the car. Actually, not before uh, putting back these two bolts holding the air filter in its place. The air filter box. Starting with the brake test with the left one. Uh, in order to do that, I jacked up the car first and then using an impact wrench, I'm gonna open the bolts holding the wheel. Cosa folosisco el chava. Okay. 
Using a flathead screwdriver, take down the uh, this safety thing. Now we have uh, two Allen seven millimeter Allen bolts back here holding the caliper, uh, and these are a seven millimeter Allen bolt. This one is right up here, and the other one it's down below here, right here. Okay, uh, Allen bolts are fully opened. And now we can remove the caliper and I brought this box here to put the caliper on the box so it won't stay in the hose. Um, these brake pads look really good so we're gonna pick, keep these ones, we don't put new ones this time. Uh, now next we have uh, two bolts behind here, one up here and one below here. And these are holding this thing on which uh, the brake pads sit. We're gonna unbolt those ones and then we can unbolt this little allen bolt from here and this is holding the brake discs and this is gonna be our final bolt before replacing the brake disc. Before we are Because we are opening the brake disc we can also check the brake pads for the handbrake which are hidden uh, under this brake disc. Uh, the two bolts, it's, uh, there are 16 millimeter bolts holding this thing are down. Uh, I've also brushed it a little bit in order to clean it. Uh, now I've opened the Allen bolt from here. It's a six millimeter small bolt. This right here. And now the handbrake is down and we can try taking out the disc. Okay. That was, uh, this came out only after some uh, really hard punches. It was corroded here and uh, somehow welded with corrosion on this part. Okay, handbrake pads look really good. They're thick, so they don't need to be changed. So we're about to put back the new disc and then assemble everything back and good for today. Clean the area a little bit with a uh, brake cleaner, also with some uh, brush wire. And now we can put back the new disc back at its original place. Oop, here we can see the place for the bolt, the little bolt, Allen bolt. Okay, we have a new Allen bolt for this disc. Came with uh, the new bolt as well. Okay. Now we can continue with uh, this little guy here and the two 16 bolts from behind. This one here and the other one from up here. I don't know if you can see it, but I can certainly feel it. Okay, tie these two up with 30 Newton meters. And then we can go on. Caliper holder. Now I can put back the caliper. Uh, before I um, Unplug the caliper. I press back with the flathead screwdriver the piston from the caliper. This way, uh, it will be easy to put back the uh, brake pads on the brake disc. Okay. All right. Good. Now we can uh, bolt in the seven millimeter Allen bolts from back here, holding the caliper. Then don't forget to put back the rubber um, rubber protection and also the protection 
the metal protection. Okay, uh, Allen bolts are tightened back. Uh, I couldn't, f I couldn't use a um, new to meter wrench for them, but I hand tighten them, tighten them well, but don't overkill them. There's no need to overkill them. And now the last step is to put back this uh, metal clip holding the whole assembly back in its place and repeat the procedure to the other caliper on the other wheel and that would be about it for today guys thanks a lot for watching and uh, maybe you can hit the like button or the subscribe to my channel if you didn't do it already and that was all about today Thanks again for the support, put back the wheel and ride on.